Hi, today we will look what we can improve in code when we are doing loops and we are doing new everywhere. Okay, it, it will you will we will see uh, with a profiler memory profiler how we how the memory uh, consumption of some cards. Okay, let's go. I have a class. By example, I have a class which has some method in it with find1, find2, find3. Then I have a repo. Okay, a repo is at some point a repository. And then in each method, I have to get my repo. Then I instantiate a new repo each time. Okay, new repo. Then what I have in my repo, it just initialize and do, do some cool stuff. Okay, it's uh, an error. Something we can say about repo is something that gets the data from some sources. Okay, at some point, it shouldn't vary. Vary. Yet there's a. It shouldn't vary depending of, depending of which user is connected. That a repo is just get data from the database. Okay, or some kind of sources. It's some kind of static. Okay, repo won't vary. So if I come back here, then I will instantiate three times the repo. So I made an example here. Then I will do memory profiler. You can use that gem. And then you will instantiate and you will create, you will do three call. Then at some point, we will create three times the repository. Okay. Then I have here my code, just running the repo. That's fine. Then it will take... Uh, uh, 160 byte uh, of memory from and it would allocate four objects. Okay, that's fine. Then what we can do to improve a little bit, then we can instead of repeating newing, we can probably put it in put it in initialize. Then when we create the class, we will create one instance of repository, and then we will use it. Okay, that's fine. Let's go with uh the the code the same thing i would just use it in the initialize if we if i come back here and i retry okay then i have saved half of the memory and i only instantiate two objects what we can do more if we are familiar with dependency injection or inversion of control, it's some at some point similar. There is some nuance, uh, difference there, but we can go uh, and look that we can inject the repository inside because we will probably have to use it everywhere. Then when we will have here, when we inject it, okay, we will create an instance of the repository and we will provide it to many uh, downstream services that may have a dependency on it okay so will we save some memory here at some point probably not because we are creating two instances. let's try okay let's try this okay then we we, we, we can see that we haven't saved any uh, memory space because we are using the same thing. But if we, here is a small example, then just imagine that you have a lot of services that depend on this service, then you should instantiate one time and then use it everywhere. Let's go with another example. Okay. Let's say you want to serialize an object. I have my definition here, okay? Let's say you have a loop now, okay? Here I have built an example. I have a serializer. And probably here the question is, you may think why I would have to serialize many objects, okay? If I'm doing a get request because I'm on, on, on the web page, then I will have one serialize to serialize one object. Then I will send it back to the client. Okay, you're right on that. 
But let's imagine we are more on Elasticsearch or any kind of microservice and then we have to rebuild documents or rebuild index. Then at some point, we will have to re-index all and then we will have to, to create a lot of instance in order to generate the data to push it. Then at this point, when you are in a loop, it could be important to think about where you instantiate the uh, the uh, the information or the classes so let looks at let's look let looks at like a, a serializer you pass an object you have some attribute and then the same thing you instantiate the class at each place you need it then you will create two new okay that's fine. And then in my example, I built a lot of example and I will call it a, a nine time. Okay. So if we go here and we look at how memory we will use for that. Okay. Then we are using around seven key uh, kilobytes of memory. Okay, that's fine. And we have allocated 100, around 100 items. Okay, that's fine. How we can improve this? So, uh, inline serializer, a common pattern we can use is we define a variable in our class, and then we define a we create an instance of it. Then if the, the first time, the first guy who will try to use it, will create the instance. And the other guys in the same class will use the instance, the created instance. Well, we, then we saved a lot of, of pipe. That's fine, okay. It's a mostly the same pattern. So let's look, let looks at what it will give now. So, we uh, we saved about 30, uh, 25 uh, allocation, and we saved some some memories. Okay, can we do much more better? Remember, we are in a loop. Then, if we are in a loop, we are creating nine object, nine serializer. Then, in nine in each serializer, then we create. Uh, the repository. Okay. So, what we can improve if we use the same pattern as dependency injection or invention of control, then we can create one repository out of the box, which, like I said earlier, it's some kind of static class. It won't vary depending on the request we have. So we can create the repository and inject it in the serializer. If we look at the classes now, injected serializer, then we still pass an object, we push, push the dependency, and then we use it, okay? So how many times we will create the repo now? Once. How many times we will use it? Nine times. So will will we save some memories? Sure. Let run that spec that classes. So we drop down to 66. At some point we saved again. Then just imagine again. If we have a huge application and we have not just 10 but thousands of stuff and then we have to process all of those things and then we create a lot of a repository and then and then and then we instantiate a lot of information the principle that we use here is inversion of dependency uh, of uh, inversion of control or dependency and inversion at some point it can be helpful here because that if we see it that 
when we have something that is at some point static and doesn't depend on user session or doesn't vary uh, during time and it's at some point static then why we have to instantiate each time at some point have one uh, instance at first and then use it everywhere and inject it in what we are, what vary and what varies okay so you will save a lot of time so just by doing new everywhere sometimes you 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 are not aware that you are in a loop go back one or two level higher and see oh man i am in in a loop then if i am in a loop i should inject if you have uh, some old legacy code sometimes it could be uh, hard because you have to go much more uh, to a higher higher level in order to introduce but this is a good pattern also to make the code much more easier and closely coupled thank you for watching and here you have seen that sometimes just a simple classes a simple new somewhere can uh, take or require a lot a huge amount of memory and you are not aware of it thank you and keep watching